85% of your boat's life may be spent on a trailer. As proud boat owners, we tend to forget the trailer and focus all our attention on the boat. After all, the boat has beautiful, graceful lines, an ego-boosting paint job, and smooth running performance that can turn any head on the water. Since 90% of all boats are trailerable, without the trailer, you might have a boat with no place to go. You can enjoy years of happy boating and trailering if you use a few simple safety rules. This program will show you how. If you ignore the safety and maintenance needs of your trailer, the risk is serious damage to your boat. And on the highway, serious damage to you and others. So start thinking of your trailer as an important, integral part of your boat. Because it is. Let's start with some basics. Most trailers are custom made for a particular boat. The data plate is on the left side of each trailer. Similar to the data plate on the inside of your car door, it will tell you the capacity, gross weight, tongue weight, and axle weight. There are two basic types of trailer beds. One is the bunk trailer, and the other uses a system of rollers. The roller trailer supports the hull with a large number of contact points. The basic difference between the two types is the method of launching and retrieval. The bunk trailer is used on a ramp where the trailer can be partially submerged, transferring part of the weight of the boat from the trailer to the water so the boat can be driven or pushed off the trailer. The roller trailer is usually used in shallower water or when a boat ramp is not available. For example, at the edge of a lake or an inland waterway. With a roller trailer, your boat must be secured at the bow. If not secured, it will roll off. Never untie the boat until you are at the water's edge and ready to launch. There are several classes of trailers within these two basic bunk roller types. But all trailers, large or small, share certain features. The tongue the coupler, safety chains, electrical connections, a winch, lights and reflectors, and the data plate. Larger trailers for boats over 2,000 pounds have a specially designed surge braking system built into the coupler and one of many sway control systems. Optional equipment strongly recommended for larger boats include heavy-duty flashers to handle the extra lights, additional side-view mirrors, and a transmission cooler for automatic transmissions. If you are towing an outboard engine, a motor support bar is recommended. This support bar absorbs the vibration picked up from the road and will add years to the life of your boat. The hulls of all boats are designed to be evenly supported by water. Trailer manufacturers design their trailers to mimic the support found in the water. A well-designed custom trailer prevents damage to the hull. A very good reason not to use a trailer that wasn't designed specifically for your boat. Okay, now that you have a boat with the proper trailer, how do you make sure your vehicle has the horsepower, transmission, and rear end to tow the trailer, boat, passengers, and gear? Simple. Consult your vehicle owner's manual. There will be a table showing how much gross weight and tongue weight your vehicle can tow. Also available from your auto dealer is a trailer package usually consisting of different transmission and rear end, larger radiator, wiring harness, and heavy-duty flasher. If you're unsure or extra cautious, get professional help in determining your vehicle's towing capabilities, either from the auto dealer or a professional trailer hitch installer. These professionals have all the charts and data concerning your vehicle. The only information you provide is the gross weight and tongue weight of your boat and trailer. Once the towing capacity of your vehicle is determined, the next step is to install a trailer hitch system. Consult a professional hitch installer. No matter how much you think you know about transporting a boat, this is not a time for guesswork. There are many hitch systems available for almost every combination vehicle and trailer. 
Only your hitch installer knows the best combination for your needs. There are five types of trailer hitches, and each one is designed for a very specific vehicle trailer combination. Now that you have had a safe hitching system installed, let's hitch up the boat. The first thing you should think, what do I have in the boat? Is the weight evenly distributed? Is there anything that could blow out at 50 miles per hour? Stow your gear evenly. Carefully distribute weight from front to rear and side to side. Items to pay particular attention to are water in the boat from rain. Always dewater your boat before trailering. Always secure your battery. Proper placement of the portable fuel tank if you use one. Gas weighs 5.6 pounds per gallon. Uneven weight distribution can cause the trailer to fishtail. You may not notice it until you get up to high speed. Make sure the ball and coupler are of the same size and that all hardware is tight. Hook the safety chains. Always, always crisscross the safety chains to form an X. Then if the coupler separates from the ball for whatever reason, the crisscross chains will cause the trailer to track in a straight line. If they were hooked up parallel to each other, the trailer could sway, causing grave danger on the highway. Check the length of the chains also. Make sure the tongue does not touch the ground if the coupler ever becomes separated from the ball. Make sure the electrical connections are secure and check that all lights are working properly. Secure the bow eye to the trailer. Remember, the winch cable is not a securing line and should not be thought of as one. Its only function is to pull the boat to the proper position on the trailer. Secure the transom to the trailer. This prevents the boat from bouncing up and down on the trailer on rough roads. On newer trailers, these tie-downs are built in and are usually in a turnbuckle design. If you have an older trailer, a simple nylon rope will suffice. You're tied down, secured, double-checked, and ready to hit the road, right? Not yet. Two more things. Wheel bearings and tires. These are about the only parts of your trailer that require maintenance, and the maintenance is extremely important. Wheel bearings rate right up there at the top of the list. Constantly backing the trailer in and out of the water will eventually displace the grease in the bearing. This is especially true if you boat in salt or even brackish water. Bearings should be inspected after each use and replaced when necessary. Replacing the bearings is not a complicated job. Kits are available at any major automotive supply store or, of course, a mechanic shop can do the job for you. Next, the tires. If your trailer isn't used often, the tire pressure will decrease and not at the same rate in each tire. One tire might have 20 pounds of pressure and the other might have 12 pounds. Uneven tire pressure is very dangerous on the highway at any speed. Handling is seriously impaired. So check the tire pressure before each outing. It only takes a minute. A minute that could save your life and your boat. All systems go. You're ready to hit the road. First, find an empty parking lot and do a little practice. Try the brakes, slowly at first, just so you can get the feel of how differently your vehicle brakes towing a trailer. Simulate backing to a ramp by marking off an area and practice backing the trailer from different angles and left and right sides. The easiest method for backing is to place your hand at the 6 o'clock position of the steering wheel. And if you want the trailer to go right, you move your hand to the right and vice versa. Once you feel comfortable, get out on the highway. There are a couple of situations you might not feel comfortable with at first. One is when a large truck passes you. You will feel the trailer being pulled by a strong draft. Don't brake and don't overcompensate in steering. The trailer will right itself when it is clear of the draft. Go with the flow and relax. 
remember that you have added considerable weight to your vehicle, so it will take longer to accelerate and longer to brake. Leave yourself plenty of time in both areas and drive safely. Towing a boat will just about double the length of your vehicle, and the turning radius will be decreased substantially. Take it slow and wide. When you get to the boat dock, pull into the parking area and check the boat for damage that might have occurred during transit, especially the windshield, the area around the chimes, and the portable fuel tank if you carry one. It is also common ramp courtesy to untie in the parking area, especially if many are waiting to launch. The proper procedure begins with, if you have an outboard, remove the engine support bar. Remove all tie downs except the winch cable. Unplug the electrical hookup. Secure the drain plug. Attach the bow and stern lines so the boat can't drift after launching. Walk the ramp area and inspect for any type of obstructions or debris. Then back slowly to the ramp. Back the trailer into the water just to the top edge of the tires, not above the trailer fender. This is a good rule of thumb. You don't want your boat to float off the trailer, but to put just enough water under the boat to release the transom from the trailer. Set the emergency brake in your vehicle and place tire chocks behind the rear wheels. Try to avoid backing the rear wheels of your vehicle into the water because your tires lose traction on wet surfaces. Before releasing the winch cable, either secure the bow line or have someone hold to the bow line so the boat won't get away. If you have an inboard outboard, lower the outdrive at this time. Start the engine and check gauges to make sure the cooling system is working. Now release the winch cable and push the boat off the trailer or drive it off. Experienced boat owners know that it's easier getting a boat off a trailer than getting a boat on a trailer. But as any art form, practice makes perfect. As another ramp courtesy, finish loading your boat at the dock rather than the ramp. Have a great day on the water and don't forget your safety equipment. Make sure that everyone has their personal flotation devices, the proper fire extinguishers on board, a sound signaling device, and remember, your boat must be equipped with lights if you're going to be on the water between sundown and sunrise. If you boat alone, as many of us do, here are a couple of tips you'll be interested in. You need to control the boat the moment it hits the water. To have this control, Secure the normal bow line. In addition, secure a longer line to the stern. Having a line secured to the stern prevents the boat from drifting into traffic while pulling the boat to the dock. The length and which side of the boat the line is attached is determined by launch site conditions including depth of the water, strength and direction of the current, and whether or not you have to wade into the water. Once the boat is at the dock, untie the lines and proceed to secure the boat to the dock as normal for loading. After your day of boating, when you come in to retrieve your boat, again unload at the dock. The ramp should be used for launching and retrieving boats only. Note any changes in conditions, for example, water current and depth. Pull the boat on the trailer by reversing procedures with lines. Winch the boat onto the trailer and lock the winch. As you drive to the parking area to stow your gear, apply the brakes a few times to make sure they're working properly. Remember, drive away from the ramp for cleanup, dewatering, reloading, and securing your boat for a safe trip home.
If you would like more information, call our boating hotline. We're here to help you have fun on the water. Happy boating.